Hey everyone, in today's lesson, we're gonna take the bass line that we just created and the chord progression that we have, and we're gonna make our own drum beat. We're gonna do a play along. Basically, we're gonna click on this track and we're gonna look at the drum parts. We can play the parts of the drum set. We can play the letter A on the typing keyboard, and that will give us the kick drum. The letter D on the typing keyboard will give us the snare drum. So we're gonna create a kick and a snare drum pattern, and we're gonna add a hi-hat pattern. Those three patterns together will create what we all know as a drum beat. There are three distinct patterns that form a drum beat, okay? So I'm gonna practice it a couple of times. I have my cycle play and record on right here. I'm gonna hit record after I practice it, and I'm just gonna hit play right now and come up with a interesting natural kick and snare drum pattern. And I'm gonna use the typing keyboard, or I can use, if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up, you can use C1, which will be A, and D1, which will be the snare drum pattern for this particular drum kit or for any of the drum kits. They're all laid out the same. All right, follows a general MIDI spec. So I'm going to just practice it. I hit play. And I'm thinking of what I could play right now. I'm gonna wait till it goes to the other part. Here we go. Feels good to me, so I'm gonna. I'm ready to go. Practice it. I'm just gonna focus on a kick and a snare drum pad. I'm gonna hit record. I hear eight clicks. And we're gonna look at the notes. If I click or double click, I can see the piano roll and I wanna see where the notes fall. All right, so I'm looking at this grid. I can even extend it out if I wanted to, and I could see that, let me just hear it. Uh, so we could see this was a little bit early, this kick. So I'm just gonna, instead of playing it again, I'm just gonna move it. I wanna put this right on the line same thing here, and this should be good. This one sounds like it's a little late, and I'm just wondering. It's not, as we could see, it's clearly on that line. Could be the bass line that I created. It's slightly off. It's a little late. Let's hear it now. This was late. There we go. And that's a little bit late. So I did not quantize my bass line or fix my bass line. This might happen to you. This sounds pretty good to me. It might be the notes in the piano part too. So I'm gonna look here. No, that looks pretty good. Uh, one thing you can do, you can lower the velocity of some of these notes or take them out completely if they're clashing because these are really outlining the bass parts here. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for now. So now I wanna create a hi-hat pattern. And there's several things I can do. If I wanna keep these things separate, I can just take this track, duplicate it, and it duplicated exactly what I played. I can isolate the kick, I can isolate the snare. I could do that here. So I have it duplicated three times. 
So I'm going to go into this track, and we could see we could see it in the pattern beat maker as well. But I'm just going to do it here. I'm just going to delete the snare hits. And now I have a kick on a separate track. And now I'm going to take these snare hits on a separate track because I already made my kick. And this is a little bit late or early. It's late, early, actually. So let me hear it now. Two separate tracks. Sounds a little late, and I'm thinking it, it also could be because Soundtrap is virtual. It's on. It's online, actually, uh, not virtual. It is web-based, so there could be some kind of delay going on here. See, that note to me sounds a little bit late right here. So I'm gonna look at the chord progression again. This all looks good. If I want to double check. I just do that and I can move them all at once. No, that's right on it. And I want to look here. Nope, it's good. All right, now I'm going to create, I'm going to delete this. And this is going to be my hi-hat pattern. Now, I have the pattern beat maker in. I can draw it. It's really easy to do. Or I could physically play it. So if I want to just create one measure, click here. And it's not allowing me. Why is that? Oh, it is. It's fine. It's the way I was zoomed out. So I'm just going to create every other box, which will be eighth note pattern. Let me hear it now. And then I'm going to add an open on the last one. Okay, so notice I only did this for one measure. So I can actually do this Go all the way here. That's one measure, and I'm just gonna loop it. And there I have a very simple drum track with three separate uh, volume controls, and I can add compression on here. I can do all kinds of things in Soundtrap. Uh, which is very cool. I can just click on this to add effects to it. I can change the kick sound if I want, um, but this is what I have so far. And then if I loop it, of course, cycle, play, and record, and I could just copy all of this and extend it. This could be a very simple in intro. It still sounds a little off time, and I'm thinking it could be if I make um, this is the kicks. So let me just do kicks here, and it could be snare. Let's hear the snare. Let's look at the snare hits again. This is probably something you're going to end up doing. Uh, let's see. All right, so we could see here it's a little bit late. And now that looks good. So I'm doing this by hand rather than 
just hitting quantize for everything. Quantize will autocorrect this. There we go. Sounds fine to me. And we click save and this will be uh, just a simple assignment to create a drum beat to split it into three different parts. You could add effects to this. You could automate things if you want, but you're not gonna automate anything here in the drum part here. I can pan them as well. Um, if you want the snare a little bit off in the right side of, of the track, you can do that. There's panning right here. So that's why this is good to separate them. This was a, did I type in snare? I'm not seeing that, I thought I did. Uh, this is my snare. And it didn't save. Why is that? Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. There we go. There's my snare. And this is the hi-hat. Let's delete all this stuff here. H-I-H-A-T. And this is my kick. I didn't realize that it did that. That might happen to you. So it's a good thing it happened to me right here. There's the kick. We have kick, snare, hi-hat, and let's pan the snare and the hi-hat a little bit off to the side. So I'm gonna look at snare, and I'm gonna think of the perspective of the listener. So if the drummer is playing, the drummer's in front of me, and if he's a right-handed drummer, the hats and the, and the are on the listener's right side. So I'm just going to take the snare and just put it a little bit off to the right side. And I'm going to take the hi-hat, do the same thing. This is what panning is. We have a stereo field, maybe around 1 o'clock. And now let's listen to it. All right, so that's the lesson for today. Just doing a drum beat play along physically playing it on the keyboard, and you could even draw it in as well. Splitting it into three different parts so you can add some effects, compression, panning, and that's really the best thing. So we took the, this is recording what we call MIDI data, and we're able to split it into three different tracks. Okay, so that is it for today. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.